Hi everyone. Good morning, good afternoon, good night. So just uh, before we start, something to tell you uh, that tomorrow, I know that, well, tomorrow is um, Christmas, I guess, because some people say that the 25th is Christmas. So, um, so, but tomorrow night, start the Christmas. So um, I know that um, is a moment to be with the family, to be with with your own and um, so uh, so maybe we are not gonna be as many as uh, we are every day but uh, just wanted to let you know that I will do the alignment anyway as always um, I will be there as here <laughs> as every day okay um, so uh, no one will be offended if a lot of people doesn't come up if we are only three so don't worry okay um, so you you're gonna do the alignment in another moment oh and also I would try to be very very con, con, very uh, I will try to speak a little bit <laughs> not a lot okay I will try I will try I will do my best to speak a little bit I don't know how do you feel but um, since yesterday um, we are feeling very tired like the body is really tired we can feel like like if we want to sleep all day um, and uh, today also uh, not feeling tired today but weird like if we were sailing on a boat in the ocean and we are feeling like dizzy uh, right now so um, we are also I guess today we are receiving um, another <coughs> solar flare um, so we are maybe mm, a little bit processing all this information from these days um, so I guess it will be like this for these three days. So it's normal to feel like this because we are trying to adjust. Uh, we are like configurating the the new energy. So it's normal to feel like weird um, in the body, like we're in the body, like maybe the emotions, uh, the the thinking, the, the, the thoughts, maybe, I don't know, for any person would be a bit different, but DC in the three bodies. This is like um, the reset of our connection, of the connection that we all have between, our, between us. Um, so I remind you that today we are still in the physical week of Sagittarius. And I remind you also that um, we are not doing this, tri this, this um, uh, trip <laughs> of consciousness. We are not doing this um, by the sidereal astrology, neither the... Um, the tropical astrology okay we are following the month of the atlantean calendar that was related to the names of the months okay so we are still in the month of sagittarius so it's not about specifically astrology it's about the name of the month hmm? as we are in the month of sagittarius and the physical week this is why we are starting our journey through the earth so remember that one of the um, the attributes of Sagittarius in the physical aspect is the traveling the journeys through life through the earth looking for destinies so 
uh, traveling is one of the keys. So this is why in this week we are traveling through the Earth day by day. The reason why we are traveling through Earth is not just to know Earth, it's because we, know, we need to know the chakras of the planet, we need to know how to relate with this, um, to understand these parts of the planet, because we are this planet, so we are Earth. And in order to live fully present in Earth, we have to acknowledge, to, uh, to think about the Earth, okay, as a body. Mm -hmm. So this is how we are going through our bodies, through our chakras, aligning by the chakras of the, of the planet. Mm -hmm. So the goal of this week is to recognize that we are the body of Earth. The reason why we are going to speak about this uh, um, about each one of the um, of the continents and the regions of the planet is because uh, we have to remember that <coughs> we are not living on a planet that we are the planet so. It doesn't matter if you know or you never been in some places. Hmm? Um, we are even though part of this world. Uh, so every continent, every region of this planet is like a part of our own body. So when we understand that and we see the earth in that way, we are able to live fully in this reality. Hmm? So today we are in the third eye and the third eye is South America. So remember that this here, the crown of the planet is Antarctica. This is Antarctica. Okay, so you have Antarctica here and we were laughing because I just wanted to say that this finger here is the Antarctic Peninsula, but it looks like a chicken. So um, imagine, <laughs> use your imagination and you will see <laughs> Antarctica and here. Um, and um, so if here is the Antarctic Peninsula, so we have here South America, Patagonia from here, and then the rest of the continent, okay? All this region. First of all, uh, I was just saying that we have the Antarctic Plateau, yes? Um, the, the, the tectonic plate here uh, of the Antarctica. And then we have the South, Af so South American um, Plateau, yes, here. In the middle, we have a tiny, um, plateau under the sea that separates both continents <coughs> that is called the Plateau of Scotia. Mm -hmm. So this plateau generates a lot of energy. And now let's think about this. Because when, I, when I'm going to explain this, for sure a lot of people will say, but how? How is possible if this organ is here or there? And just for you to know, the Earth is not organized exactly as a human, okay? We are totally different. Hmm? So the way in which we are is all separate, but the earth is all like this. So that's why uh, it's not exactly as a human, okay? It's all like kind of mixed. So uh, you have to take this in account to understand what I'm going to say. The same way in which we have bones and joints. Yes, um, the earth also have both have bones and join, joints and we call them tectonic plateaus. If we know now that these are the joints, yes, of the, if, if the 
Tectonic plateaus are the joints of the planet and the bones of the planet. So now we can understand that some of these plateaus, they mixed one to another, okay? And they push one another from one side to another, or some of them goes below or above the other one, okay? So these movements of these, of these joints, of these tectonic plates, they, um, they push uh, the crust of the, of the planet and they create the mountains. So as, higher, as highest the mountains, you can see that there is this uh, tectonic joints, okay? So you have these big mountains and that means that below of it, you usually have another tectonic plate below, okay? Also, what happened is that these two can just um, create so much pressure that breaks the, the tectonic plateaus. Uh, they, they break each other, opening places for the inner fire of the planet in the magma, um, in the magma coming out. So that's what creates volcanoes. So we can find chains of mountains or chains of volcanoes in the, in the spots where these bones and joints of the planet are together. So um, now you can understand what happened in the joints of the planet by just doing this. When you stretch, when you do this and you listen to the crack crack like this, how do you feel? you feel more relaxed well these movements crack, 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 are the earthquakes for the planet but it's just the planet doing like crack crack yes so um is the planet really relaxing <laughs> basically uh so this is just to understand also that as above so below as huge also the tiny um, that, for example, I have this uh, thing of doing crack crack with my fingers. I know a lot of people hate that. Sorry, it's my thing. <laughs> so I, I cannot, I cannot help. I cannot help it. So, um, uh, so imagine that the liquid that we have here being like cities. Okay. So when I do this, it's like all these cities moving and have an earthquake like oh my gosh so now imagine that the earth is doing exactly the same with its fingers and um, the cities are worried and they say oh my god what what is uh, what is happening why it happens to us and basically the earth is just doing track and relaxing herself it's all about perception so I know that this is difficult, but the next time you feel an earthquake, just relax because the earth is stretching. Uh, so now think about this. Besides all the continents, all the bones, the tectonic plates that we have, um, they all are connected somehow because the plates of here, of the the shoulder, the arms, the hip, everything is connected. The head, the, the, the skull, everything is connected. And how is connected? Because of the spine. So the spine gives flexibility, movement and stability to all the rest of the bones. Mm -hmm. So the spine is made up with 33 vertebrae that they just move. Uh, and gives flexibility. As we grow up, we have not 33, we have less because some of them get united. But in the moment when we, were, when we are born, we have this 33. So this spine is also in the planet and it's something that goes through the spine of the world, going through every one of the bones of the plates of the crust of the planet so it moves the flexibility of each continent 
and you can find it across every chain of biggest mountains in the world. So I just said uh, to look for a map while I explain this in English, so you can you can check it so so you so you find it. Um, um, so the spine of Earth begins in the mountains that we call the trans transantarctic uh, chain, the transantar transantarctic mountains. From those mountains, they go. Um, they go to uh, the Antarctic Peninsula and it goes down into the ocean by the Scotia Plate rising up in the uh, Sandwich Islands and from the Sandwich Islands it goes back to South America in Tierra del Fuego and from Tierra del Fuego it starts to go up by the Andes, the Andes Mountains so it goes all through the Andes Mountains and then when it, when it arrives to Colombia and, and Venezuela it opens in two. One goes to, uh, uh, opens in two surrounding the, uh, plateau, the, the tectonic plateau of the uh, Caribbean, the Caribbean plateau. So one goes through the Central America and the other one goes to um, Antilles, I don't know how to say it in English, the Ant Antilles, Antilles, okay, whatever. <laughs> so all the islands in, in until Cuba. From there, they get together again in Mexico, in Mexico City, okay, in the volcanoes of that region. So it goes up together again through Mexico, United States in the West, and then Canada, and it goes to Alaska, it crosses the Aleutian Islands, and it gets again into um, into Kamchatka in Russia and from Kamchatka it divides into again going down through Japan and up it goes to I guess the Kronotsky uh, mountains uh, so they go that way and they connect again in the um, uh, in the Baikal Lake in Russia and from there they open a little bit again to create the Tibet and the Altai mountains and from the south they create the Himalayas okay so the Himalayas and the Altai get together again in the Karakorum and from the Karakorum they start to create the mountains of Zagros in in Iran so from Iran it arrives to Turkey okay and Turkey Anatolia is the place where this chain divides in three <coughs> in this trinity one up is the ural mountains in russia the other one down which is the mountains that divides africa the western africa and eastern africa um, um, until the mountains the volcanoes in kenya in the south and the other one goes towards the center crossing the Carpats Island, the Carpats Mountains, the um, um, Alpes Mountains, uh, Pyrenees, and the, all the Mediterranean crossing towards the Acers. And the Acers goes up again to Iceland. And from Iceland, it goes down into the crust of the planet in the North Pole. So all that is basically the chain that we call the spine of the world. So in this planet, we as humans take the North Pole as the place where we are all looking for as a place that is on the top because we all rule ourselves by the magnetical uh, aspect of the world which goes to the North. Hmm? So, but, but from the point of view of the universe, is the south from where everything comes. And here's when we have to understand in astrology, uh, if you know astrology or if you are studying astrology, you will have listened that besides the sun, the moon, the rising sign, um, we have also the north node and the south node. 
okay, in our charts. So the south node, the, the south node is the one that, <clears throat> that tells me from where I come from and what do I have within already integrated inside of me. And the north one is telling me where I'm heading to, where am I going, what I am going to do, hmm? what I have to learn in the future. So let's speak about this from the universal point of view. Hmm? So from the point of view of the universe, our south node is unity because we come from the spiritual levels, we come from the spiritual realms, we are coming from the origin of the universe. So what we have integrated within ourselves is the unity, is something that we have, uh, that we have inside because we come from there. So where am I going to? I am here to manifest the unity by duality, to create, to be myself a, a creator. So I need to work with the polarity, I need to divide, to create, to manifest, etc. Hmm? From the point of view of the earth, not the human point of view, the earth point of view, the spirit comes from Antarctica because it's the south. So from there comes the energy of the spirit and it's going to the north because it's trying to find the creation, is trying to live the reality. So that's why we are heading to the north to manifest, to create. But we have to remember that the south, the south pole, Antarctica, is a place uh, that reminds us our origins, the axis of our essence. So now, Picture this, that the people that is looking for, um, for the enlightenment, to look for the connection with the spirit, we need the Kundalini from the root chakra going up. Hmm? So we would have to start by, the, by Africa going to Antarctica to create this, this connection with the divine, with the spirit. Hmm? So from, from the point of view of our matter, looking for enlightenment, we have to go up, activating the Kundalini from the root chakra. So from the point of view of the spirit, the Kundalini is the opposite. The spirit is willing to live in this reality, to manifest here. So that's why from the spiritual world in Antarctica, it goes to the fire of the third eye, yes? And starts to create this fire towards the opposite, to the matter. Hmm? So now we can see this, that when someone is from the earth from the matter trying to reach the spiritual it goes up to the crown from the root chakra but if the spiritual is trying to go into the matter it will go from the crown to the earth and remember the earth is not like a human the earth has two two crowns one crown in the south in the antarctic representing the spiritual crown and the other one in the north the crown representing the physical aspect of the crown. Hmm? So now if you see a map and you picture the Scotia Plateau, you will see the shape of a penis. And the South American Plateau will have the shape of a vagina. So both together in the here is like the spirit the spirit activating the kundalini from that region of the planet this is why i said think about the planet in a different way because the things are not exactly where we as humans would organize it because it, 
the tendency of the earth is to be rounded. So the connection between the sexuality and the spirituality for the planet is exact. It's all the same together because this planet is about creation, manifestation. So that's why the spirituality is related with the root chakra to create, to manifest. <clears throat> This is why you may have heard the, the perception, the, the, the sentence that says the ecstasy of saint, I don't know who, because um, the prophets, the saints and all the people in the past that were connecting with the spirit, they felt, they felt like if they were having an orgasm, but not a sexual orgasm, a spiritual orgasm here. And that feeling, that sensation is the one that opens the third eye and tells you, now I get it, now I can see. And now it's incredible that the point where this Kundalini of the spiritual realm is activated in the planet is a place that we today call Tierra del Fuego. That means um, that in, uh, in Spanish means the land of fire. That's where uh, it starts the fire. This is why in South America we connect with the third eye, the place where oh, now I can see, I can see the fire, I can see. Right now I am not speaking about the states of South America. I am speaking about the tectonic plate of South America. I am speaking about the mountains, the lakes, the nature, the fields, rivers, forests. I am speaking about that. Not about Argentina, Chile, Bolivia. No. We will talk about that in another moment. So, um, the South American ground is the one that represents the vision into other dimensions, into other realities, the one that takes clarity, not the countries. Sometimes some original people from South America were able to assimilate the information from the earth so they can tell and explain how that land is talking about the vision of the universe, how to connect from the earth to the vision of the whole cosmos. Hmm? But some of them, they could. What I am saying about South America doesn't speak about South American people. It speaks about South America, the continent. It doesn't matter where you are in the world. It doesn't matter if you have been born in Australia, in Asia, in Europe, North America, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter where you are. South America is your vision when you connect with the earth. When you connect with the planet, <coughs> your third eye is South America. So it's not about South American people. It's about a continent that represents a chakra in your body, which is Earth. It's important to, for us to see, to understand that the Earth doesn't have borders. It doesn't have frontiers. It doesn't have nationalities. The Earth is basically the whole world. So each one of the parts of the earth is an organ inside a body. The goal that we are trying to achieve here is to remember that we are part of earth. So when we say I am earth and I recognize I am earth, 
suddenly Antarctica becomes my crown chakra and South America becomes my third eye. It doesn't matter where you are. And remember that the planet is all connected. So um, sometimes we, we think that um, when we go deeper into these explanations, you will see that, uh, but how, how if South America was here, why this eye is, is some other place of the planet? Because the earth is not like a human. The, the parts of the earth are all one over the other, so they are all connected. Okay, so, um, but we will go into that. So this is why South America represents the vision. Where are we going to? Um, and not, as I, I repeat, not the countries. The earth there, the land, is the one that brings you that information. But this is the information of the future, of where are we heading to? But this information is from the I am. Because it's a continent close to the spiritual, to the Antarctica. So it's about what is coming from my inner self, from the power that I have inside as a spiritual being. It's not about politics. It's not about... Um, uh, innovation in the future with technology or whatever. No, it's not about that. It's about a very much deeper side. So one way in which we can start to bring this information back is by, by speaking with the original people from South America, that they have all this knowledge, but they have it from the past. So we can have information from them to acknowledge a lot of things, but then we have to transform it into another level, into another, uh, into the new time, because we should not come back to do exactly the same as before, because that story has passed. So it's not about coming back to live like them, it's about to take the essence of that in order to build something new in the future. And of course, many of the holy sacred plants are also helping a lot of people to awake uh, so most of them come from south america and another thing that the people and the lands of south america represent is flexibility this is why south america represents a lot the aquarius time because of the flexibility the reason why I'm here in Egypt is because in the reflection, Africa is the first mother of humanity, uh, the, the, the one from the past, and South America is the one from the future. So um, the River Nile is bringing all information for, for a new um, humanity, and uh, all this information that I'm receiving and doing here with you is the one that I will try to bring into the new river, the new um, river of the mother, the new Nile, which is in the Parana River. And um, me, myself, I was born in Argentina because of my own decision, uh, because I don't have any link in history with South America. It's the first time I was born in South America in my existence. Um, I had no links, no attachments with, with that land. So that's why I decided to, to, to be born to do that there. Um, because I don't have any expectations of the past of that land. Um, I don't have any attachment, anything to solve with that land. So that's why I am, I guess I will be able to, to build towards the future and not because of the past in that land. So that's why I am doing this. <laughs> so let's begin with alignment. There are many things to speak about of South America, but um, we will talk about that 
eventually. <clears throat> so don't worry. The vibration for today is Tha. The statement for today is I am the celestial consciousness. The code for today is the color magenta. In a fast spectrum, after the ultraviolet light, the magenta tones crown the coldest of the spirit, a coal capable of burning in the human percep perception of colors. Its vibration connects us with the invisible spheres of div divinity. When the intensity prevents us from observing them, from observing them, but feel them. The connection with the highest subtle. Let's go. Take a deep breath, concentrate in your breathing as you sit comfortable with your body. I remember that with me I am bringing the consciousness, the realm of all the animal kingdom within me so I can help them to rise also their consciousness. I remember that I am expanded in this incredible wide space in a white horizon seated in Antarctica in the South Pole watching the white horizon around me I perceive the fresh air as I breathe, I feel the cold around me as I recognize that I am in the throne of the crown, surrounded by the white and the light blue of the sky being the king of this celestial realm on earth. Take deep breaths once and again as you feel how you slide in the ice towards the shores, as you start to see these black fjords missing themselves in these cold waters. I begin to breathe stronger and faster as I feel the heat of this fire that arise in the mountains. I feel as I levitate how I can perceive the fire rising in the horizon across the sea. In front of me I see a land burning on fire.
I absorb with my breathing the power of the spirit and I jump towards the fire of that land. I see a tiny light shining surrounded by this fire. It's a lighthouse in Ushuaia. In front of me, I see how the fire starts to light the whole land rising in between the frozen mountains and the fjords of Chile. The winds of the Argentinian Patagonia blow pushing this fire up towards the north. And I see the Andes rising up. I see shining in white the Aconcagua, the salt of the uni, the pearl shining in Titicaca. and the snows of Huascaran. I contemplate the great plains of Argentina and Uruguay, the big Chaco from Paraguay. The rainforest, Amazonas, in Brazil, Bolivia, and Peru. As they protect the holy and sacred desert of Atacama. I see in the horizon towards the north the volcanoes creating the bridge in the equator opening the Holy Trinity in the great Colombia and lightning the three holy flames of transmutation in Venezuela reaching the shores of the Guyanas and Suriname I contemplate South America surrounded by light and lights my consciousness and I resound. I am the celestial consciousness. I am the celestial consciousness. I am the celestial consciousness. For now I am a celestial spirit being aware of what it can become. I see. I am South America. I am the Earth and South America 
is my greatest vision. I am the light. Slowly, I begin to take this consciousness from my third eye to all my body, caressing and stretching. And each one, at its own time, come back here and now, opening your eyes. Welcome to the vision of South America. Thank you everybody for being there. And as always, see you tomorrow at the same time.